This video is a follow-up to the Behringer Victor unboxing video that I just released. If you have not seen that, I suggest that you watch it first. See a link above. This is the first of two videos covering the details of the Behringer Victor module. This Eurorack module is a quad digital oscillator which is based on the Prophet VS synthesizer from sequential circuits released in the late 80s. This technology is called Vector Synthesis. It was developed by Sequential. It was also the basis for the Korg Wave Station and the Yamaha SY22 and TG33 synthesizers. This detailed video will cover the user interface, control input and output, some use cases related to mix modulation, and the mix envelopes. The second detailed video will cover more use cases, software including SynthTribe and a third-party editor. Finally, I'll close out with a few reflections and opinions on this oscillator. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the user interface or UI on the Behringer Victor Quad Oscillator. First, let's look quickly at the UI elements. We have the OLED screen, the data encoder, six LEDs which indicate which menu is active, two page buttons, two select buttons, and we've got a joystick. The joystick also has a push button, but it's not used by the current firmware. So let's look in a little more detail. The OLED screen will display something different based on what menu we're on. Right now we're on the oscilloscope slash program menu and we can use the data encoder to change programs. The page buttons select which menu is active. Once you're on a menu, for instance, oscillator D, you can switch from one parameter to the next with the select buttons. And you can, of course, use the encoder to change the value of that parameter. There are also alternate uses for these four buttons, and that's with a, a long press. For instance, the frequency button, if I press and hold, all the LEDs will light up and I can change the basic octave. So this is an octave switch function. If you pressed and held this button, whatever changes you made to the program would be saved. If you press and hold this button, you get an X mod amount and that adjusts the range for this XN modulation input. And of course, this button is the same thing for the Y mod modulation input. In this section, we'll cover the control inputs and outputs, the I.O., on the Behringer Victor Quad Oscillator. First, let's take a quick look at these inputs. We have the joystick, which is a manual input. We have the XN and YN. We have other CV inputs, including gate in, volt per octave, FM in, and the associated FM knob. We have the frequency control knob. We have outputs X out and Y out. And finally, the mix out. And this is not a control output. It's the audio output, which is a mix of the four oscillators. So the joystick we've already talked about, but it would be considered a manual control input. The X and Y inputs are CV inputs to control the mix of the four oscillators. These inputs are added to the joystick position. This behavior is in contrast to the mix envelope. 
which is effectively a sequence of joystick positions. The mix envelope overrides the joystick position. The exception to this priority is when you're actively moving the joystick. In this case, the joystick and the mix envelope are battling it out, as it were. The last one to change has the priority. The gate in triggers the mix envelope. The volt per octave controls the frequency of all four oscillators. The FM in and the associated FM knob modulate the frequency of all four oscillators. The associated FM knob is an attenuverter which controls the range and polarity of the modulation. The frequency control knob is basically a fine tune. Normally it's at the high noon position, which is no change. You can go up as much as seven semitones and down as much as seven semitones. The X and Y outputs are CV outputs controlled by the joystick. These can be used to control external modules, which is pretty cool. It makes it perhaps the cheapest joystick available in the Eurorack format. And finally, the mix output, which I've already mentioned, is a mix of the four oscillators. So that winds up the control inputs and outputs. And just to close this out, this is the USB-C input, which connects this module to a computer or to the Pro VS Mini. We're going to look at that in more detail when we get to the software section. In this section, we'll cover the use cases related to controlling the mix of the four oscillators in the Behringer Victor module. We'll be using the XN and YN to control the mix electronically. I've created a program which uses the same waveform for each of the oscillators. What will change is the pitch. I'm using notes C, G, B, and F. The Victor output goes straight to a VCA. I'm getting CV and gate controls from a MIDI keyboard. Let's listen to the four oscillators in turn by positioning the joystick to the four corners of what I call the diamond. Now let's position the joystick in the center and add modulation via the X and Y input jacks. First, we'll use a square wave from a 921B oscillator. Note that I had to boost the level of the VCO output. Second, we'll add a square wave from a 921 oscillator, that is number one, synced to the 921B square wave output, and number two, offset so that the two square waves are 90 degrees out of phase. Let me know in the comments if you'd like more detail on how this is done. Finally, we're going to use the 960 sequencer to provide X and Y values to the Victor module. Note that the 960 outputs are set to the X4 position. This provides a range of 0 volts to a little over 8 volts. I had to add a negative offset of minus 4 volts to get the output to a plus and minus 4 volt range. This is still a little shy of the plus and minus 5 volt range that we want for the X and Y inputs. So there will be a little bleed in the mix from the other oscillators. Again, let me know in the comments if you want more detail on the setup. First, we'll shift the 960 sequencer step using the keyboard gate, a V trigger. Every time I play a note, the sequence position will shift. Second, we can remove the gate from the shift so that we can select specific steps with the red buttons as we play. Finally, 
we can have the internal clock drive the sequencer as we play. These examples give you a feel for using the X and Y inputs to control the mix of the four oscillators. This leads us to our next topic, mix envelopes. After that, we'll look at some other use cases. In the last example, we created a series of mix positions with X and Y values from the 960 sequencer. Each value represented a crossfade between two corners of the diamond around the joystick. X value for the horizontal crossfade and Y value for the vertical crossfade. Stepping through this series of preset mixes on the Victor module is a powerful sonic tool. The downside of using the 960 is that it is tedious to set up because of the offsets. There's a simpler way to do this. It's called a mix envelope. Better still, it's built into the Victor module. Let's go into more detail on the mix envelopes. If you've already grasped the concept of mix envelopes, feel free to jump to the next chapter where we continue the use cases. Imagine that you created a series of five X and Y value pairs representing the five joystick positions i.e. mixes. These five pairs are numbered points 0 through 4. They represent number 1, the starting joystick position of the mix envelope, point 0. Number 2, three intermediate position, points 1, 2, and 3. And number 3, the final position of the mix envelope, point 4. Four additional values represent the rate of change moving from one position to the next. This is a step beyond what we did with the 960. The rates are named R1, R2, R3, and R4. All of these position and rate change values are available for edit in the Mix Envelope menu. I've added a Mix Envelope to the program we've been using. We'll use the same rate of change for R1 through R4 just to simplify what we're hearing. Here are the five positions, A, B, C, D, and center. The mix envelope works like any other envelope generator, but let's walk through the progression. I'll patch the CM1A V-trigger out to the Victor gate in. When the gate in detects a V-trigger, the envelope jumps to point zero. Then it begins to move to point one at rate one. This movement is repeated from points one to two at rate two and two to three at rate three. As long as the gate is on, the envelope will stay on point three. We'll see variations on this behavior shortly. Once the gate turns off, the envelope moves to point 4 at R4 rate. Let's listen to this happening. Gate off. Let's look at the mix envelope menu. And we have point 0, point 1, point 2, point 3, and point 4 and the joystick will let you adjust these points so you can dial in the point you want and then you have your four rates R1, R2, R3, R4 and you see that they're all 35. Let's look at the repeating behavior. This is the sound with zero repeats Add one repeat. And let's look at the repeat behavior. We repeated from zero to three, back to zero, back to three. Let's listen to that again.
and we could repeat just the last two positions, two and three. The mix envelope loop can get sophisticated, but for starters, let's just turn it on and we're going to loop from zero to three. And let's listen. That was one repeat. Let's turn it to zero repeats and it should do nothing different from no loop at all. And let's go to two repeats. Now let's go back to the loop and there's some other variations of the looping. You could loop from two to three only in the forward direction. And you could also go back and forth. This will go back and forth from zero to three, back to zero, back to three. And that's the looping and repeats. That concludes part two of this series on the Behringer Victor Quad Oscillator. Thanks for watching to the end. Please like and subscribe to be notified of part three when it's available.